my lovely, lovely imps, I have a treat for you all today. That's right. Today. It's been a little while since we've done some conservative reacts. And I've told you the reasons why I don't do conservative reacts as much as I used to. We used to do it all the time. It used to be a little funnier. These days, it's like, it's like you're engaging with an NPC in a video game. They recite the same lines over and over and over again. And you never, they don't go out of their bubble. They don't, they don't do, they don't actually do debates anymore. If you actually do a debate with a conservative these days, they just repeat the same lines. It's like, it's literally like talking to a wall. It's absurd. But we got them. We got, we got one, everybody. We got a conservative knocked outside of her natural habitat. Okay, today I am going to bring you a little, a little nugget that will allow us to enjoy a, a, pe a peering into the conservative mind, okay? And that is, of course, the interview that Taylor Lawrence did with Libs of TikTok, also known as Chaya Rychik. Now, Libs of TikTok is a particularly monstrous conservative. Libs of TikTok runs an account on social, on multiple social media sites that basically um, highlights libs on TikTok, as the name suggests. And, but, but you see, what she means by libs and TikTok is, a, you know, it's a little flexible. Usually what she means is that she finds a trans or non-binary or gay person that she doesn't like, um, and then, uh, and they might not even be on TikTok. They might be on Instagram or Twitter, or maybe they're just in their own life. And one of her followers went and filmed them without their consent. Could be one of those many things. Uh, and then she blows them up on her gigantic social media, uh, uh, account so that they can get focused on by a ton of the most deranged people on the internet. Now, Libs of TikTok has millions of followers, millions upon millions of followers all across social media, and the vast majority of them belong to the Trump cult. They belong to people who back Donald Trump and who very much agree with his worldview. And it's interesting because basically there's been this repeated incident over and over and over again of her choosing random people that she doesn't like, often who are doing absolutely nothing even remotely objectionable, but that disagrees with her political worldview, and then boosting that to her enormous network. And it's funny how many times over the last few years we've been able to track libs of TikTok directly sourcing someone to harass that ends up getting boosted by Fox News, that ends up getting boosted by Donald Trump himself or other people, all kinds of the entire right wing uh, 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 repeatosphere, the giant echo chamber of the right wing will get mad and boy, are they vicious. Okay. Like if you just, if you don't believe me, just go to libs of TikTok's page and pick a post and go look at what her commenters are saying about those posts. We've done this before multiple times on this show. Okay. This is her game. She picks somebody she doesn't like. She picks somebody who she thinks looks weird and she gives it, uh, she gives them like red meat to her followers who are incredibly vicious. Now, it's interesting, of course, because it turns out that actually Libs of TikTok has had a number of occasions in which she's talked about a place or a person and then immediately afterwards, violence is done or threats of violence surge in to that person or place. In fact, it's happened over and over again, most recently, mind you, in the case of the Owasso School District in Oklahoma, where a 16-year-old non-binary student was beaten to death in the bathroom. It's interesting because libs of TikTok has repeatedly, in fact, highlighted this exact school district and has even been cited in news articles as having targeted this exact school district. Almost like 
Libs of TikTok is using her platform to create a nightmare targeting effect for the most heinous and hateful people in this country that is directly resulting in terror and death. But I guess that's for you to decide, dear viewers. Anyway, it's very interesting because Libs of TikTok got, uh, got, got interviewed. And I want to show you what happens when one of these people is fished out of their echo chamber, okay? Because uh, it's pretty funny. So this right here, this person you see right here is Libs of TikTok. That's her. That's Chaya Raichik. Know that, recognize that face, okay? She's put her, she's got her face everywhere now, but that's who she is, okay? And I want you to listen to this little bit of an interview because I think it's particularly fascinating. It's a rare look into their mentality. If you eradicate transgenderism, which I believe you suggested in a post today. No, I never suggested that. Oh, okay. You reposted a post that was advocating for that. What would happen to the people that have already medically, socially completely transitioned and are leading happy lives? What would happen to them? I mean, what's your plan for, for that? If transgenderism doesn't exist, which it seems like you're, that's what you believe, what happens to all the people living happy lives as trans people? Well, it, first of all, the whole trans is, it's based on a lie. You can't change your, you can't change your gender. Okay, but. So they could, they could. That's very debatable. Go live their, their, their life. I mean. I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. Sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house. Hmm. I never said that. So you're totally okay. It sounds like it sounds like you so so Taylor says to Libs of TikTok, aka Chaya Raichik, it sounds like you do want to control what people do in their houses by, you know, eradicating trans people. Now, that's a sentiment we've seen echoed all over the place, not just from Libs of TikTok, but also with people who associate with Libs of TikTok. But let's see how let's see how she responds because so far it just doesn't really seem like much, right? Seems like she's basically been avoiding copping to anything. Uh, you know, a journalist points out you just retweeted a tweet that said that you want to eradicate trans people from public life, um, and then she says I didn't say that, and then she doesn't deny when asked directly that's what you want to do, which is interesting. It's an interesting little word game, but let's see where it goes from here, shall we? okay with people being trans just not as long as they're in public no i never said that they could oh let's hear that again i want to tell people what to do and can't, can't tell someone what to do in their in their house sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house i never said that so you're totally okay with people being trans just not as long as they're in public no i never said that they could hmm. oh okay so hold on a second so now it's starting to fall apart isn't it She's she's off script. Uh, I never said I want I want to, to you know tell people what they do in their house. Okay, so you're fine if they live their lives privately. Then you just have oh you only have a problem if it's a public thing, right? And then she says, well no 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 hold on. Ah uh, uh oh, let's see where she goes. It's the whole thing is based off of a lie, and I think that um, the fact this lie cannot be mainstream in our in our society it's just it's a lie and what harm is it causing do you believe um i like the truth i like truth right i like the truth i like truth so she's asked a very direct question what harm do you think is is being perpetrated by trans people existing and she says, well, I like the truth. Now, there's an interesting, of course, word game that's being played here. And this is one that you see all the time with conservatives, which is that they defer to very broad concepts of the truth. And the obvious answer to this is that, well, there isn't a single true answer uh, when it comes to discussions about gender. Gender is a social construct that has gone through many, many changes over the years. And... Uh, uh, people have different perspectives on it. And some of them are m better evidence than others and others aren't. But th you can't just defer to the truth in the abstract. I mean, unless, unless you're just kind of 
saying activation words to an echo chamber that's primed to know exactly what you mean by that. Which, oh, oh yeah, that's what she's doing, isn't it? Anyway, let's continue. Let's see how she, let's see, see how she handles the rest of the conversation. Let's see how she handles a question of harm. Let's listen. Um, I like the truth. I like truth. Right, so but I'm deep. saying, what, what's, the, what's the harm of people expressing their gender identity differently than you believe it to be? What, what harm are they causing? Um, like I said, we are a, a, um, a nation of truth, and I, I'm, I'm, I seek the truth. But that's... What harm is being done by people expressing their gender identity in a way that they believe to be true? And she says, well... I believe in the truth. We are a nation of truth and I seek the truth. So, sounds a little bit like uh, like the chatbot is broken, huh? Oops. <laughs> kind of kind of kind of weird, right? It's very funny to me too. The idea the, the concept of the nation of truth to me is very fascinating to me. Because when the fuck has America ever even pretended to be a nation of truth? That's not even, like, remotely a part of American identity. America, the country of uh, truth, truth, and truth. Everybody knows that. And, and, of course, Republicans, they've never openly and happily voted for a guy who blatantly lied before George W. Bush and the WMDs, anybody. Like, come on. Like, let's be fucking real here. A nation of truth is the, the, the goofiest thing that you could possibly say here. But again, it's almost like it's a prepared line that is now short-circuiting when confronted with anything other than a pre-prepared script. It's almost like the Trump cult, including libs of TikTok, spends all their time indoctrinating people, telling them exactly what to think, and the moment that they encounter an idea outside of that, they short circuit and have to flee the situation. It's almost like that's exactly what's going on. But I'm asking about the harm. What's the harm? You might believe it to be false, but what's the, the harm? The harm is that there's a lie that is very mainstream and is being embedded into every institution. I guess I'm wondering what the material harm is. Aside from it's maybe something that you disagree with, as in your version of the truth is different than their version of the truth, what is the material harm of them living their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm necessarily. So there's no harm. I didn't say that. Huh. Whoops. Uh, um, uh, oops. Did a little oops there. What's the material harm? Well, I don't know that there is a material harm. Oh. Lefties get a lot of trouble, okay? We get a lot of shit from conservatives and liberals alike when we say that at the end of the day, it, there, is no, there is no need to analyze reality when you're dealing with a conservative that all they care about is control. It's all about domination. That their excuses mean nothing. That they will literally contradict themselves because everything is just a shallow paint, a shallow coat of paint over the fact that they want to control you and that they want to dominate you. And is this not the perfect example of that? Is this not the perfect example of that? What's the harm? Well, I guess there's not really a material harm. Not everything that's bad has a, has a material harm. So what you're saying is you disagree with other people's interpretation of gender and you believe they need to be eradicated or otherwise dominated because you feel that way. It's amazing that the so-called facts over feelings crowd, this this crowd that's taken that up like a like a like a like a flag. Nah, I don't care. Facts don't care about your feelings. And then you ask, well, what's the factual harm? What's the evidence that there's anything bad actually happening? Well, there isn't. I just don't like it. It's just not right. I just don't think it's right that you should do something differently than I think. That's what these people are at the end of the day. They are weak, scared people who feel the need to dominate everyone else. And they will do literally anything they have to, including targeting children. 
Keep in mind, that is one of the things that Libs of TikTok has repeatedly done, okay? They go onto their social media and they find vulnerable children who they think might be being cringe or whatever, and they blow them up to millions of people so that those people flood in and harass the fuck out of that person. That's who you are looking at when you see Chaya Raichik here. And what you are being, what you are being given a glimpse into in this interview is the bald-faced truth. There is no material harm. They made it up. And it's funny, she talks about truth, truth, truth. I don't believe in lies. But to me, having a different interpretation of gender than somebody else and disagreeing with them, that doesn't sound like a lie to me. You know what does sound like a lie? lie telling somebody who has just shown you proof that you said something, that you didn't say that. When uh, 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 telling somebody that... Uh, that there's a material harm, that there's danger, and then when asked about it, not being able to provide that and having to say, well, I guess there is no material harm. That, to me, is what sounds a whole lot more like a lie. For somebody who cares so much about the truth, it sure seems like Chaya Raichik is invested in stretching the truth, if not completely and utterly obscuring it. Now, obviously, nobody needs telling that these people are blatant hypocrites. However, sometimes seeing it in action can be valuable and remind you of exactly the types of people that are elevated by this movement in the United States. Libs of TikTok is one of the most influential and famous conservative public figures right now. One of the most famous and influential. And this is what happens when she goes off script, when she's asked a direct and simple question. There were no gotchas here. There was These were simple questions that she wasn't prepared for because she's out of her echo chamber. And what you get is truth, 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 and then a load of goddamn lies. What you get is a deferment to virtues. Oh, it's about, it's about saving people and protecting the children. And actually, we can't prove that there's any harm. We actually just want to control you and dominate you. That's all you really need to remember. This is the people that everyone who's not a conservative is struggling against. If you're a liberal out there, if you're a, a middle of the roader, if you're a lefty, doesn't matter which one you are, these people believe in controlling you. They believe that anything that disagrees with them is false. No matter whether the reality actually reflects that or not, they live in a world that they assert is true no matter what, and they will use force if they have to, to put you in your place. Just remember that. There's nothing more to say. If you enjoyed this segment, make sure you hit subscribe down below because you know I'm going to be digging into these conservatives every single day of this show. Because that's what I do. Because I'm Demon Mama. Press subscribe down below.